Hello YouTube, this is Coxter. Uh, this is my first update on my video What will I do after my death? So, on my organ donor cause. This update is a first response to your comments and your reply videos. I really wish that people look so clear and rational on this cause as Rochebrook did it in his video response, so link below. But I have to take seriously objections, distrust, suspiciousness and worriness. I hope that now in my first update video I can give you at least a complementary perspective. Especially the personal experience uh, described from uh, TOS 100's video and from Christine Peace and uh, uh, Exa Beta Taboo's uh, response video to it. Uh, the links are also below. I had to read many comments and watched videos, unfortunately also from people who did not really understand what's going on and were only describing how they want to be buried and how they like their funerals being organized. Some of my old subscribers know already what was my work in my active life. I worked as a logistic engineer for about 12 years in Africa and 10 years in Asia in water and food supply. This was for refugee camps, humanistic missions, and it also happened that I organized transport for the need of different NGOs like UNICEF, Médecins Sans Frontières and the WHO. I only mention this because one of the main objections, which is the hurry or sometimes even the lack of sense of tact that the medical staff has to receive the okay from the relatives of a dying person to get the organs for a transplant. Sorry today for the bad pronunciation, but I have since my very early childhood a chronic sinusite and now the trees are bleeding outside, it's spring and it caused me some problems. <laughs> there is an accident somewhere. The first aid staff has to do everything to save life in the first place. They normally have to look in your purse to find out if you are allergic against medication or if maybe the accident happened because you were in a coma shock due to a diabetes. That what they find out now by reading your papers will help them to choose the right manner to give you the best possible help. The goal is now to stabilize you and bring you as fast as possible to the next hospital. Now we are here in a situation I will discuss in a later video. Namely, if some life-keeping actions have been taken, nobody has now the right to make them undone. In this case, this would be active euthanasia. Now given the case that our victim is declared brain dead and has a donor card, the medical staff surely after some more confirmations of the brain date has the right to announce on a specialized database which organs are disposable for transplantation. On the other side, the potential receiver is informed and prepared. Prepared how? Maybe it's someone who still lives at home and is called to come as fast as possible to the hospital. Maybe the receiver has to be prepared with some medication he has to take. It might even be the case that two or three receivers in different locations far from each other are prepared to receive the organs. They are awaiting since a long time. All these actions take some time. Meanwhile, our brain death body donor 
is maintained alive at or on some machines, simply because the transplantable organs can't survive for a long time outside the body. In some states, the body is already declared dead after the brain function has stopped. In other states, this same body is still not declared dead as long as the machines remain the heart beating. A full logistic feat is now playing to bring the organs to a prepared receiver. Now, just saying which problems of transplantation can happen during the travel. As an example, on 9-11 there were some organs on travel by plane who never reached their receiver because of the closed air traffic. And also sometimes accidents happen or simply the traffic is so dense that it's impossible to bring the organs in good time and good shape to destination. But these are exceptions. As you can see here in this situation, there is no major problem. Let us now take a case as described by TOS 100. There is a person going to die or is brain dead. Other people decide what has to happen with him. Because he don't has done a card, nor has expressed its living will. The doctors ask the family if they would agree to give the way free for transplantation. If so, tests have to go on to see if the organs are in a state to be transplanted. What is the difficulty here? On one side we have a family who lost their husband, father, mother or even worse the child. On the other side there are people whose life depends on these organs. Can you see the dilemma on both sides? Can you feel the oppression on the medical staff to do everything right now? Can you understand the pressure on the person who knows that, as example, in the Eurotransplant zone in 2009, the link is below, from 380 people waiting for an organ, only 90 could be helped. In such an oppressing situation, the pious and the flair might something not be that big as expected from the relatives. And we are maybe in a situation that our donor's body, and only the body, is maintained for some time artificially alive. Yes, the relatives of the donor might be shocked by the necessary procedure. Why does this happen? It happens because only fewer than 20% of necessary organs are available. It happens because so few people has a donor card. The solution to this is simple. Become a donor and make the transparent table organs more available. This will also take away the pressure from the doctors to convince someone to become a lifesaver. This was my first update. I'm waiting for your comments and your video answers for a second update. I will lead your in future videos a little more in the direction of your self-determination and to the manner how you can make sure your last will will be respected. It will also be necessary to make a little excursion uh, through the palliative medicine. I watched today a video from Skaus Cosmetics, which I also link here, about some big problems in the palliative treatment of people in England, but probably also in your area. Let me close with a touch of humor and let you see what the Monty Python's view on organ donation is. This will be my last link below. I wish you all peace and a good and a healthy life. Ciao, ciao. This was Goxton.